Hey, hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Courtney Rollins from the Aqua Team, head of the acquisition team. Um, yeah, so we're here. We're just going to jump right in. Every Thursday, yikes, every Thursday, uh, me and my team, we get together and we focus on some aspect of a sales negotiation tip so that we can be better when we speak to sellers. Uh, what we do as the Aqua Team is we source discounted properties. We source deals. Um, and from that point, our exit strategy is usually to wholesale the properties. And that means we assign the rights to the contract that we pick up to investors like you or the folks out there who are looking to uh, increase their income or increase their long-term wealth, whether it's through a rental or through a, uh, fixing it up and reselling it or uh, creating a note. There's tons of ways that you can um, make money and add value in real estate. The average real estate transaction has about 40 people who eat on it. When you think about the title companies, the contractors, the uh, the wholesalers and investors and people like us, the people who actually get the uh, proceeds from the property. And then not to only add, hopefully, usually they're adding value to the neighborhood by creating or by uh, fixing up these properties. Because many of the properties we go after are those ugly, ugly ones that really need some work and need some love. Um, so we know that the best thing that we can do is get better at having quality conversations with our uh, sellers that's going to allow us to add more value and going to allow us to serve more people and allow us to receive more as well. As well. That's the universal law. That's exactly how it happens, right? And so um, today I'm with my team and we're going to look at, um, revisit some of the uh, techniques we've looked at in the past. Um, I was listening to a podcast today from Lewis Howe's School of Greatness, great podcast. And he had the late, great, amazing Bob Proctor. If you've never heard of this guy, this guy is like the, was the modern day Napoleon Hill mixed with Jim Rome, mixed with just, I don't know, just amazing human being. And he talked about how he reads the same book every day. He studies Think and Grow Rich, reads two pages of the same book every day, besides reading tons of other things and all. And I really uh, was inspired by that. In fact, I went and grabbed my um, book, uh, two books I'm gonna read every day now are Think and Grow Rich, which has changed my life. So I'm gonna, Read one, two pages every day of this, of this book, just like Bob Proctor did. And uh, I've read this book so many times that I can only have the cover no more. Dale Carnegie's uh, <laughs> How to Win Friends and Influence People. So um, I used to read this once a year, but now I'm just going to like take a page, one, two pages a day and just really um, dig in and understand it. Repetition allowed me to dig deeper. And that's why we're going to be circling back to many of the concepts. All right. So um, I'll just jump right in and then we'll uh, have my team who's on here. Uh, be able to uh, jump in and, and be able to uh, try it out and ask some questions and everything. Um, right now, it looks like, oh, it looks like Greg j hopped off. He's junior acquisition. Looks like he may have some issues going on. But, um, um, but yeah, we'll see if we get him back. If not, I'll just keep rocking and rolling. <clears throat> so let's see where my screen. Oh, man. <clears throat> Something down the wrong throat. Or the wrong throat, the wrong pipe. <laughs> Hopefully it's the right throat. I only got one throat, right? All right, here we go. So I'll put it on present mode. I guess that's slideshow. Emotional labeling. And I'm going to have you... Uh, let's see if I can help you be a, um, a co-host. We got Rachel, the lead manager host is with the or the lead manager with the most is our quarterback helping us make sure no leads get left behind um right on here as well what's up rachel if you're the co-host and if you see greg come in just uh let him in please <clears throat> no, the phone was ringing or something Oof, this is live folks we raw we don't have any editing or anything like that as we grow we'll uh we may add on to that but that's not gonna stop us from being able to share you know Imperfect action moving forward um, is much better than being stale and stagnant, not doing anything at all. So uh, you see the raw aqua team right here in the beginning stages and glad you were part of it. So emotional labeling or to mislabel. <clears throat> when we're talking about emotional labeling, that's a literally where we're, we're, we're um, there we go, got him, got him in there. We're literally speaking to actually looking, listening to the emotions that come from a seller we are biological beings we are not logical 
Um, well, we can be logical. We can access that logical side of our, our brain, but that neural cortex, the logical side that makes us human, that separates us from other animals, is one of the newer parts of our body, our brain that's just developed relatively new when it comes to the span of human evolution. That frontal, you know, low, low uh, cortex or frontal lobe is where like a dominant aspect of ourselves uh, has been there for a while. And it's important. It's the reason we're still here. It's the reason your ancestors survived, you know, fear, um, anxiety, love, all that stuff that, you know, being included, uh, making sure that they had the equipment or tools to be able to survive um, was very, very, very important. So we still, we need to be able to understand that so that we can know how we're, who we are, be aware of how we, who we are so we can um, be more effective in talking to our sellers. So labeling is a way of validating someone's emotion by acknowledging, giving someone's emotions a name and shows that you know how that person feels and they feel more connected to you as a result. And if they feel more connected to you, there is more likelihood that they will serve and work with you because we're, we can't convince anybody to sell their house. A motivated seller is a motivated seller. They're going to sell to someone. <laughs> so we're not trying to like trick anybody to sell their property. This is not dark psychology or magic. We can't trick anybody. We don't want to trick anyone to do that. But what's going to separate them from selling um, their property to you, me, and to other folks is comes down to if we can express certainty, competency, and likability and be able to connect someone, active listening is one great path to be able to do that. Actually, it makes you a better human being, too, in my opinion, you'll be able to communicate more effectively. And this all is like the king of the negotiation is Chris Voss, uh, Never Split the Difference. That's another book I should read every day. Actually, I did say that. I told my boys this morning. These are the three books I'm going to read every day. Chris Voss, Never Split the Difference, uh, Think and Grow Rich, and um, my raggedy copy of How to Win Friends and Influence People. I highly recommend that you get this in audio because you get to hear Chris's voice. and He talks about that FM quiet storm voice he used. He's a smooth brother too. This guy was number one top uh, negotiator and um, FBI negotiator in the world for many years. And he was discussing how, you know, when you talk about uh, working with folks who have people's lives, it's not, you can't do a compromise or you win a little bit, I win a little bit, I get half the, the hostage and you get to keep half the hostages. No, you gotta never split the difference. And he talks about how his set techniques are so powerful and have revolutionized sales um, training. And so that's what we're going to be doing when we're talking to sellers and we're listening to emotions. Um, we're listening to them. We want to be able to be labeling as often as we can. It's way more powerful than even the open-ended questions where you're asking. Uh, it's more definitely more powerful than binary questions where you ask a yes or no question. That's usually you don't want to use that technique um, unless it's for a specific type of a thing. Open-ended questions are better, but labeling is even better. So labeling, phrases like, it seems like, it sounds like you're, well, it seems like, let's look at some examples. So the lead discusses having a hard time collecting rent from the tenant. Well, it seems like it's frustrating. Um, you have, seems like you're having a frustrating experience with the tenant. You sound overwhelmed, you know, or lead shares they're excited about their son completing an upcoming project. Oh, you seem very happy and content with his efforts or you know, however it comes out for you that's you know authentic, um, but clearly gets to the point that you are hearing them and you're saying it. Lee shares they have a contract fall through with another investor. Wow, that sounds very disappointing. Hmm, I don't know if I, you know, as I think back to that, I don't know if that's a strong one. Wow, that sounds very disappointing. I think more effective would be, wow, it sounds like you're disappointed. So I'm going to on a fly right there. I think I, I want to change that phrase from, wow, that sounds very disappointing to you. Wow. You sound, it sounds like you're disappointed. And what happens is somewhere we tap into some type of like connection in folks brain and they just have a stream of consciousness that comes out and you will receive way more information um, that helps us recognize what type of tool we can use to serve the seller if we can at all. So um, that's really, that's the crux of it. Um, and we're going to try this out a little bit, but before we do, there is another side too, that comes with this emotional, you can do mislabeling as well. If you're trying to get uh, more information out of your seller. So let's leave things like they're tired about do, of doing repairs. This is almost like a throwaway too. Well, it sounds like the rehab process is going well. It sounds like you're excited about finishing the rehab process. Oh, no, nah, man, this thing is going terrible. Da, 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 you know, um, uh, or and you see right there, say it with a, you know, an uptick of a question. Sound like your rehab process, uh, you want to finish it? 
no, 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 actually, no, it's, it's driving me crazy, all this good stuff, you know? <laughs> and so I want my team, our team to do that. And we got G Money is back in here and Rachel is in here. So I would love for you all, first of all, how you guys doing? You all all right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Doing good, doing good. Great grab. Rachel hates when I ask if we're all right. She hasn't given me an <laughs> alternative way of asking folks. I don't know how I'm supposed to introduce y'all on a, uh, if, <laughs> but hey, if I can find another way, I, I will do that. But uh, but that's awesome. So, um, well, that's awesome, but, uh, but it is what it is. So uh, Rachel and Greg, y'all up to do a little bit of role play? Rachel, you up to do a little role play? Sure. What about you, G-Money? Yes, sir, I'm ready. All right, awesome, awesome. So, um. Who wants to be the seller? Who wants to be the buyer? Uh, I think I will be the seller. All right, you're the seller. All right, mm -hmm. awesome. And go ahead and get your um, your avatar there. This is a seller. We this is a motivated seller, so that we can give uh, Rachel, you know, something worthwhile. If it's not a motivated seller, then it's not really a worthwhile role play. So uh, go ahead and get your your avatar there, thinking about the condition, price, and reason that you might possibly sell it, so she can dig in. And Rachel, I'm just gonna we're gonna put it on like three minutes, four minutes, and we may um. Pause after that. Is that okay? Sounds good. Uh, sounds like you're not too excited about it. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like you like to make assumptions. I was just about to say, isn't that something that you're not supposed to do? Make assumptions? Well, yeah. Wait a second. Did, did we just spend the last 10 minutes talking about <laughs> uh, labeling and I literally just labeled? <laughs> I know. And I just labeled <laughs> back to you. Yeah, but you're still not supposed to make assumption. You made an assumption. No, so let's let's be the stick. That let's. I'm glad you said that, Greg. So that's that's actually what we're trying to do. We're trying to when we do label, we're actively like you know, if you hear something emotionally in somebody's uh, tone or voice, you want to go ahead and name that. So um, it is going to be an assumption, but it's an assumption based on the act of listening, unless you're trying to do a mislabel on purpose. So when I say don't make assumptions, don't make assumptions about their like motivation. So like, don't assume that oh, this person's not going to sell because. He bought it for forty thousand dollars, and I want to offer him ten thousand dollars. Or he bought it for three hundred. Or they. So that's what I mean about assumptions. But this ops, this is definitely a um, a conclusion or assumption that you're making. So that's a distinction. All right. All right. Uh, perfect. perfect. That's good. All right. So I purposely wanted you to give. Uh, I can't see the rest of it. But we yeah. all we all can see no, it because it's, it's uh, being recorded. So. <laughs> uh, but it's all Unless good. you didn't want that chat to be. <laughs> serious. Didn't, but it's all good. I put everywhere. My bad. Oh, you're good, you're good. All right, here we go. All right, I'm going um, to shut my big mouth up and let y'all rock and roll. So let them ring, ring into it. Okay, right. ring, ring. Mm, hello? Hey, Craig, this is Rachel from the Aqua Team. Um, I'm calling you about 123 Main Street. Is this a bad time for you? No, nah, go ahead. What's up, Rachel? How you doing? I'm real good, thanks. Mm -hmm. Um, I was wondering if you would be open to accepting an offer on that property there um yeah i think i i'm, I'm willing to accept an offer uh which what are you talking about well our offers depend on a few things um including condition the market and some other factors um have you made any hmm, like repairs or upgrades in the last three to five years in the kitchen yeah. or bath Yep, it's a uh, fully renovated new roof, uh, a deck, a fence around uh, the house, a uh, bedroom. is actually, I had a two bedroom, uh, one bed, yeah, two bedroom turned into a one master bedroom. Uh, it has a pool okay. in the back. Um, yeah, man. That sounds uh, great. I mean, can I ask, do you live there currently? Nope, that's just one of my side properties. I, you know, that's. Oh. Uh, mm hmm. So why don't you renting it out and, and making a killing off of it? It sounds like a really nice place. Well, to be honest, I like to take uh, I like to have fun at that place. So I try to uh, <laughs> I try to keep that place really. Hello. Hello. Yep. Okay. So right, that's why I ain't sold it. Yet. I've been really trying to keep it, but. I'm getting old and I, you know, I really don't need that property. I got other properties too. So I think I'll get a lot from this property. So what you, what's your offer, man? Let's, let's just get to the nitty gritty. What's your offer? I would love to give you an offer. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, we're probably thinking like the low forties. Um, 
is that about what you were thinking? Mm, nah, not really, because, man, you go see this house. I put in a lot of money, over $100,000 worth. That's just the repairs. I mean, mm. I, I, I made this place look like um, almost a, a new, brand new house. Okay. Well, listen, it sounds like we might not be the buyers for you um, because we give a cash offer, but in exchange for that, it's not going to be what you would get if you put it on the market. Mm. Um, okay. So what you suggest I put it on the market? I suggest that you figure out what you want to do. And I can help you with either one. I can give you a referral to a realtor. Or if you're more interested in a cash offer, then I can take all the information you just gave me and slide it to my acquisitions team and see if we can possibly come up to what you're asking. All right. That sounds pretty good. Okay. I'm okay. open to that. Okay. Okay, good. So what I'll do as I will slide that to them now, and um, what we'll do is we'll call you back tomorrow before 4 p.m. How does that work for you? Yeah, that sounds good. I look forward to your call tomorrow after 4 p.m. All righty. Thank you so much. Have a good one. All right. You as well. All right. All right. A lot of good stuff in there. A lot of good uh, points to be made, too. All right. How y'all feel about that? What, what, what you thinking? What you guys thinking? Uh, go ahead. Right, ladies first. <laughs> I broke character for a second and I laughed. But that was part of the flow. It seemed like that could be a part of the combo. <laughs> yeah, I felt like it was natural. So go ahead. Yeah. Um I think it went pretty good. I appreciate that Greg had a purpose, which was, you know, you do you are a motivated seller. Um, because for a little bit, I felt like I was losing it. I don't know if I was losing control of the conversation or if, um, I don't know, but uh, I, I think I wheeled it back in with the throwaway. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what you thinking, G? Um, yeah, I don't feel like it was, it was a bad um, call. I think that I was a motivated uh, seller. Um I think that she got my the, the main points. She knew um, the, the condition. She knew um, the price. She didn't know the exact price, but she knew 40000 when wasn't going to hit it. So that's why she mm -hmm. was able to actually make this suggestion of mm -hmm. um, placing it on, on uh, MLS or, or listing it, rather. Um, uh, yeah, I think that it was the flow was good, person more so. Um, I think that we need to remember underwriters. We're going to add that to when we, mm. um, when we talk about looking up um, the, the taking it back to our uh, taking it back to our manager to our uh, acquisition manager. That we have to remind ourselves or remind the people that um, we're going to take it back to the underwriters because we want to make sure that this price is. It's reasonable. It's fitting our condition as well as theirs. So. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah. I, I thought um, as far as like the structure and the flow, like you, you came in, you had a pattern disruption with the way you um, said his name. And you you, know, you set the stage nicely. I always like listen to your tone. I think that you did start off with a couple of open it and, um, yes or no questions, as opposed to um, have you made any changes? The word what? Like that's really really powerful. What what changes have you made? Then that allow gives them a chance to uh to flow he didn't, didn't actually flow into it but that was uh you know the role play um so what right. changes have you made um can i ask did, did you live there uh well that was that was good to get some clarifying information i think there was an opportunity he, he was giving you an open door to to label actually i don't think that really showed up in the conversation when he was talking about partying it was like, oh it sounds like sounds like you have a lot of fun there you know right you know? Uh -huh. right okay, right. okay. Uh, I, yeah so that, i think that was a perfect opportunity for that i do think that um that you did you did went to a throwaway which was pretty cool why not rent this out why don't you rent this thing out you know i thought that was pretty cool um when you gave the um, offer it seemed like it was um uh a little quick but i like that you said we're probably think i think that you need to uh give yourself a way out it's like you know well you know we haven't really talked too much about it but you know in that area we know people are buying we like people are buying around 40s that way you have a little bit way out as opposed to 
we we we're probably thinking 40k because that means it's like we already had a conclusion you know as opposed to we're thinking 40k it's listen to the nuance uh it looks like a lot it looked like investors are buying around 40k it looks like we bought properties over there around 40k and i love though the question you asked is that what you were thinking about because that really was clarifying so that clean it clean it up to me um but uh just be mindful of um of giving yourself a, a way out because you're like okay okay and to the to the point of um the underwriter it sounds like g money biz man greg is a workhorse um shoot, rachel work both of y'all are awesome um uh at you know i just trust that y'all are do you know you put in the time putting the work and we were just looking at a new script but you don't uh, you don't have to be necessarily wedded to saying underwriter even though it's in our, our other script uh because it may sound a little jargony but i think for me g I like that. She, I mean, I think when she was talking about acquisitions getting back, that was sort of like our underwriter. But it's not. That's not. That's not a big deal here. Or there. I just um, just letting you know, Greg, that you. I know you have the script, and we want to learn it and nail it down so that we have the freedom to understand it, so we can like you know know the the essence of it. You know what I'm saying? But I love that you were like obviously that you uh, are picking up the script, man. And um, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Just so know what I'm doing? Yeah, kind of. Kind. They said what? I said I just want to know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, I dig it. <laughs> there it is. All right, you guys, you all want to try again? I can um, jump in. Um, I'll be a, a seller or a buyer. Um, Rachel, you want to be a seller or, or you, how, do you, how do you want to do this? Or do you want to be an opportunity to, um, to come call? Yeah, that's fine. You know I like to be calls. All right, I'll be the seller. Unless, unless you want to be the seller, Rachel. And then I'm going to jump in and, um, and, and do one. So this will be a little short. I might cut you all off. Just so we can get all, all, all that's all fine. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Who's uh who's a seller? Rachel, you be the seller if you don't mind, unless you're uh, yes, I'll be awesome. all right. Ring. <laughs> um, no, thank you. I'm, I'm... Okay. Yeah, Ring. Ring. Hello? Hello? Oh, hey Rachel. Oh, yes. Hey Rachel, this is Gregory with Aqua Team Properties. Uh, did I catch you at a bad time? Uh, no, it's okay. All right, cool. I'm calling you about your property at 123 Mead Street. Um, and are you interested in selling the property? Oh, I have been considering it. Okay, well, uh, so do you have a few minutes, maybe five minutes or so to uh, talk about the property? Well, let me tell you what we do first. Uh, we- Yes, please. We based our price on, uh, we based on if we're going to get the property on the condition of the property, uh, the market value, as well as uh, your condition or, or your seller situation. Um, do you have a few minutes to talk about your property? I do. That's okay. Okay. Um, so has any, can you tell me a little bit about the property? Yeah. Yeah. Um it's been in my family for a while. It used to belong to my aunt. Um, right now, it's mine. I don't necessarily want to live in it because it's too far away from work. And mm -hmm. and I, I, but I don't really want to rent it out because I don't want anybody to trash it. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess it's just there. Oh, sounds like sounds like you um uh, you don't want to do anything to it really right now, right? Well, <laughs> sounds like that's what I have done previously, but you know what? I am now ready to do something about it. Oh, okay. All right. Well, um, can you tell me anything about, like, have it, has the house had any renovations? Um, not in the last five years, but 10 years ago, we redid one of the bathrooms and then about 12 years ago, it was the kitchen. Okay, so no renovations, everything, not, not many renovations within the last five years. So is, a, um, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, um, so if you decided to sell, how much would you think about selling the pro property for? That's correct. I didn't hear you say that again. Uh, how much? No, I haven't said it. Uh... <sighs> Well, are you in the area? Have you seen the property? Yeah, so typically in this area, uh, actually I'm looking it up right now, looking at comps right now. Um, 
in this area, we sell, we usually purchase pri property around 60,000. Is that something that you, you're interested in? Oh, well, it, it's, it's about the time I have uh, closing costs or by the time I uh, give everybody their cut, I'm not gonna have anything left. <laughs> so, so 60,000 is too low for you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sounds like it. So what is a good, what is a good, what is a good? Oh, let's, let's pause, let's pause right there. Thank you, because uh, just for, for the sake of time and all, we all getting in the rhythm right there. What, what, uh, what do y'all, I'll give you a second to think about it, reflect a little bit. Uh, any thoughts, Rachel or G Money or Rachel? Um, um, so the gentleman, there you go. <laughs> all right, all right. I should have asked Rachel. one person. Apologies. Go ahead, Rachel. Oh, I don't. I don't have anything. Oh well, I think that uh, I started going too fast. Mm. First of all, I needed to slow down. Um, um, and I think it maybe is because we are are going. We practicing right now, and I'm trying to make sure I get the script out and mm -hmm. make sure I get it instead of being so natural and we, we've been recorded, but um, I just need to slow down. But I think I got majority of the main point CPRT. Uh, well, I didn't get the T as of yet, but I was trying to get to the yeah. CPRT. Yeah, so G Money is, uh, he, he's taking on, uh, you know, learning the scripts and all. When he says CPRT, that's like the way we qualify our, ourselves, the condition of the price, I mean, the property, uh, the price that they're looking for, most important, the reason they're selling and the timeline. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a weird, at the end, it sounded like y'all were like on different, like you were answering questions that she didn't ask and she was asking questions like, like were y'all on the same conversation? Like it was weird, like was there a delay going on? But it, but this this is the distinction I need uh, us to really be clear. When we're talking about labeling, um, we're labeling emotions. So you were labeling observations of just like things, not emotions. It sounds like that's the price you want to get. No, you need to label emotions. It sounds like you're frustrated. What's an emotional word? That'd be, okay. That would be a would that be an adverb or is that I don't know is that an adjective maybe yeah, I don't say that I don't know what <laughs> so we're labeling emotions not labeling um, observations I mean you, I mean you can sometimes to show active listening but label emotions or well, it sounds like uh, that's a sounds like you're tired of this or it sounds like this is a burden or it sounds like you're happy or it sounds like something that's emotional emotional labeling so that's a clear um, distinction that I'm glad hearing us say it that we can um, you know clear up a little bit as we keep practicing and another you know thing oh yep when he i kind of in my mind set him up for an emotional label because i when i was saying it was my aunt's house so yeah. i really don't want anybody to mess it up i was thinking yeah. oh right after i said that i thought he could have said oh it sounds like that that homie's a lot to you there oh uh, that was that phrase i was thinking yeah. it sounds like the homie it sounds like it has a lot of sentiment it sounds like you really like that home sound like it has a lot of, yeah yeah, yeah nice. nice yeah that's a good one um, also, G, I think, um, uh, what was it? Uh, I do this all the time, brother. So I need to be mindful of it. Let's just really, as we slow down, ask ask one question at a time or answer. Or, or So you went into the, uh, which was, I was like, you were rocking. Like you went into the, was it, was it, you went into the, oh, do you have, is this a bad time? And they said, well, well, let, well first, let me tell you how we work. Something like that. It, it was. Just so make sure like one one stage or one phrase at a, at a time. And I, I need to be mindful of that. Also, one thing that we really need to, uh, to do is like really train our brains to not go for the yes, but go for the no. So um, so like, for instance, uh, you did say it's a bad time, but as it moved on, like that worked for you. Or you could just all you have to add is or probably not, you know, or probably not, you know. Uh, so that remember when we in actuality, when we get to say no, we get to feel in control and we want our sellers, this is their journey and we want to feel like they're in control. We're just steering the boat. So it's just a simple, um, like the more repetition we get to, we'll, we'll more go for the uh, the no as opposed to the yes, as opposed to, yep, that works. Yep, that sounds good. Yep, that yep, that makes sense. That, that and, You know, the whole, I mean, I still have done it before. That makes sense. That's like, that's, I think as collective, as humans get, well, the Western world, whatever you want to phrase it, as we get more used to like sales pitch, we become almost numb to that, and it, it and so we want to um, 
uh, get to know until 10, 20, 30 years from now when it becomes you know, people get used to get to know and then we evolve and, or change and adapt and all. Um, but yeah, man. Um, yeah, one question at a time. Other than that, man, you're, you're definitely coming along, brother, especially with the repetition. So I definitely appreciate it. Um, let me get on the clock, man. I'm, I'm going to leave, leave y'all uh, take one from me and help me uh, critique me because, you know, we do these, excuse me, we do these trainings. I'm not presuming or assuming that I'm the best at sales or anything like that at all. Um, so I'm not setting myself up as a, an expert. I'm trying to grow and learn with you all as well. Um, so let's, let's do it. So who's going to be my um, my buyer and whoever else can be the time, no, excuse me, timekeeper and give us three and a half minutes. All right, I'll be the buyer. The buy no, seller, seller. I'm sorry, seller. I mean, I'll be the seller. Uh, here we go. Ring, ring. Uh, hello. Hey, Greg. Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? That's Cordy. Um, I'm sorry to call you a little bit out of blue here, but uh, I was calling about a property I think you own over at 423 Main Street. Uh, did, did I catch you at a bad time? Um, uh, nah, not nah. kind of sort of, but but what's up, man? All right, well, well, uh, uh, we buy properties in the area, and I just wonder if you uh consider an offer on that property there. Mm, I mean, I'm listening, okay, cool, cool. So, I right, got you. So, uh, well, if you consider an offer, uh, do you mind if I tell you how we work and we'll see if it even makes sense of us moving forward? Yeah, go ahead, man. Uh, I perfect. think I already know how y'all work, though, but oh, uh, got you, got you. So, yeah. How do you think that? What's that? Well, I think that you uh, you you base your, I mean, you like a, 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 a middleman, right? Like a, mm. somebody that buy discounted property and, you know, right. for people that may be in distress or something like that, right? Right, right. So you, you've talked to some folks with us before. You must be getting a lot of calls from people like me. Yeah, yeah I've been getting, man, I've been getting so many calls about that property, man. And right. nobody really seemed to want to give me what I want. So if you can't give me what I want, I don't know. Yeah, that sounds like you're frustrated, but with uh, the way people have been telling you. Yeah, I am, because everybody keep pussyfooting me around. So yeah. like they tell me one thing, I call you back tomorrow with the with the purchase agreement or the uh mm. contract, and I'm like, all right, and I ask for I man, the the property I already know is worth a hundred thousand, right? I know it. I'm just asking for fifty thousand dollars, man, because uh, I know it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff we got to get done to it. So I'm asking uh, for fifty. Wow, no one can come up with fifty. They say they can come up with it, but it's not they. If they don't call me back the next day, when they say they're gonna call me back, I'm not gonna answer the phone. I think uh, that yeah. this is business, and if you're not gonna be serious, ain't no need for me to be dealing with you. Uh, that so if like you're gonna be serious, perfect. you don't tell me you're gonna call me back tomorrow. You need to call me back tomorrow. I got you that right. You say you're gonna do something, do it, right? Yeah, that's true, man. I'm choosing to sell my property to you. All right, right. Well, it seems like it is a really uh you know emotional thing for you. Are you uh, what's what's going on with the project? What can you tell me about it? Let's see if well, we might be my, able to meet you. It was my parents' place, man. My parents, they mm -hmm. both died. Uh I just haven't put any work in it. Yeah. Uh when my dad died. He he had already put so much work in. They got they came out and appraised the house at three hundred thousand dollars. That was when he was living, and that was before all of the, the. I let it. I just let it go, man. You know, right. it's an emotional thing. They've been dead for ten years, um, and I just haven't done anything with it. I think the grass already high up on it. I mean, I I, I have so many HOA fees. Mm. HOA <laughs> man, and I don't even live in an HOA. <laughs> oh, hey, Greg, do you mind if I ask you a question, man? Go ahead. Well, man, it seems like this is uh, giving you a lot of, uh, you know, consternation and all that stuff. But you said people aren't giving you what you want. Do you know what yeah. you want? Yeah. I, I, I mean, you said I the price, but is the price I, that it, it really ain't just the price, man? Honestly, it's really sensitive. Like mm -hmm. I think I'm also pussy putting them around because, mm -hmm. you know, they call me. 10 minutes after they say they're gonna call me and I just haven't it's three and a half minutes. I uh, got you. So the next stage I would go, this is interesting because I mean we I've had calls like this. So I would say, well, well, Greg, all right, well, go well, on, let me let me I just I would pause and like Greg, hold can you, let me let me pause for a sec because I'm I'm definitely hearing, you know, the frustration in your voice. And you and I appreciate you telling me that you people aren't giving me what you want, but but you said you you or answering back, are you sure you're ready at this stage emotionally to, to move forward? Honestly, man, that's probably why I, that's probably why I didn't do it. 
I mean, uh, I think I am. Some days I say I am, then other days I say I'm not. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm still kind of. See, you got me starting to cry right now, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Greg. <laughs> yeah, bro. Uh, it sounds like it's tough, man. But do you, uh, uh, what, like, what can you envision you would need to be able to, you know, make that that choice, whether you're going to keep it or whether you can move forward? I mean, this, I mean, Man, Definitely. all I need, all I write all right now, all I need is some love. <laughs> all right. Gotcha, man. Well, that's pretty tough, man. <laughs> that's all I need right now, bro. Yeah, that's a lot what we need, bro. Well, I hate you. Hey, if you I call me it. back probably tomorrow, man, I might feel better. Well, I'll I'll do that, man. And it, it pains me to hear you uh, in such a state. Um I'm gonna definitely check in on you. Um, I'm gonna see what we can do on our end to help out. But um, if I can call you back at nine in the morning, I'm gonna check in regardless of you know the, the property and all. This is seems like something a little bigger than that. So I'll uh, I'll definitely check in with you in the morning. And um, I hope you. Uh, well, are you are you sure you're all right? Because like we can throw the property to the side and and, and check in, man. Are you 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 got somebody you're with or what's going on? You all right? Yeah, I'd be fine, man. I just started thinking about my mom and dad, bro. When we started yeah. talking about the house. How That's long ago they passed away? Your mommy asking. Um, so my dad passed away ten years ago. My mom passed away uh, about five. Okay. And you know, important I mean, people in your life. Yeah, that's why I haven't done anything to the place. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, brother. Well, I, I I can't imagine. I still have. I'm fortunate to have both my 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 fam my parents with me, and I can't imagine what you're going through, man. But I definitely um I hear you when talking about needing love. That's that's definitely a human condition we all need, man. And if you don't feel that, that's I, I can I can I can only imagine. But I'm definitely gonna give you a call back, Greg. You have my number here. When we get off, I'm gonna text you my name and my number. If uh, I might just even shoot you a text later on, just check in and see how you're doing. But um I'm um definitely gonna check in tomorrow and see if we can do something. So hey. Feel free to save my number, man. If you see it and you don't feel like picking up, of course I understand. But um, definitely check in on you and be thinking about you and um, and all. But uh, definitely wish you the best, and I, I appreciate you giving me a little bit of your time. Appreciate it, bro. Sorry, man. I, I didn't change the whole dynamic, man. <laughs> Thank all you right, for your time. All right, no, it's all good, man. We we're here to serve people, man. The people are people. All right, take care. All right, yeah. All right, that was good. All right. So so no. Courtney, this is really serious. I know I was acting, but dog, I, you know, I, I had a conversation with someone. You, I, you remember I told you just past week, this lady, I called this lady. She literally said, Gregory, I need help. Can you call my son? She gave Bro. me her phone number. I called her son and um, he called his mom. He thanked me for calling him. And he actually yeah. act, invited me to right, his office. Right. Man, we're dealing with we're dealing with distressed property owners. These are sometimes it's not the property that's distressed, it's the people. I've I've been on the phone these three, five or maybe I can count on both hands how many times I've been on the other line. Somebody's crying. I'm no bullshit. So uh, yep. this is like uh, you, you you threw it at me. That's that's we're here to serve folks. That's this is this ain't got nothing to do with the property. It has exactly. nothing to do with the property. You know this is. So we have to be able to deal with that. So I've literally sat down and in, in, I'm thinking of Kathy right now. I'm thinking of uh, uh, Melvin. I'm thinking of Diane. I'm thinking of several folks. I'm thinking of Miss Enos, who we were fortunate enough to be able to help them with their Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner because they couldn't find, they didn't have any money at all. Even we we threw them a little bit of money for the uh, when the property <laughs> sold them because, the, I mean, we made nothing really off of it. But like they were dealing with human beings. So we talk about distress. We're not just talking about distressed property, we're talking about distressed uh people. So yeah, um, yeah, so you gotta be prepared to deal with that and, and deal with it with the servant heart, you know. Um, yeah. So that's why I appreciate uh the things that you keep uh trying to stress with us, making sure that we are whole, making sure that we are together, make sure that you know we are uh, seeking um well-being for ourselves because if we are not seeking it for ourselves we cannot be servers to others and i appreciate absolutely you. brother oh man we can, yeah, exactly we can't be this is the great thing about this entrepreneur or just life journey like we ain't going 
our success is not going to be able to exceed our level of self-development and understanding of ourselves. And it don't mean like we perfect people. Shoot, we get up, we get down, we have ups and downs, man. But um, being humans is, humans is perfect. Right. Yeah. So, man, right. yeah. Um, but it, it, I, I, uh, thanks, Rachel, for taking keeping the time. I wanted to see where this went. Um, is there anything that you all heard that I, I could um, that you sound good or could improve on or whatever? I, I think that I... You, you practice what you was talking about today, our lesson for today. Um, 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 getting, you, you know, saying that uh, it sounds like you're emo it's emotional and, yeah, connected you emotional. know, you really started, you know, as, as a seller, um, you really started making me feel like, man, you, you were listening to me and mm -hmm. you, um, yeah, I would be I, I would feel more comfortable doing business with you because you didn't rush me off the phone. You didn't make me feel like I was just a piece of paper. I was a, uh, 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 just a, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, appreciate it, brother. Yeah, appreciate so you it. made me feel like I was a person, not just a, a client, a, a seller or a customer. Yeah, appreciate it. And um, again, hey, hey, Rachel, G Money need to goddamn Oscar, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm about to pull up. <laughs> Over there, because it's all right. I mean, yo, hey, yeah. So, hey, yeah, we need to have an opportunity in the event. Hey, and if you do, that's, I mean, that's we real people too, but yeah. Just thinking, Rachel, Rachel over there dying laughing. Like, was rolling. You I, was have, you... I was, I, thought, I had a vein come up in my head because I was like, her, Rachel laughing, and I was sitting there trying not to laugh. I'm gonna stay with it. I'm staying in it. I just stared at the camera so I can mute myself. Oh my goodness. I was hollering. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, you silly. Oh, you Greg, man. He was trying to throw okie doke, but then he got back into it when he saw yep. me like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He tried to throw me a boomerang. Then he tried to throw me a boomerang. Cardi, you know, you know, I do this to you every morning, yeah. bro. I do this every yeah. single morning. As long as hey, as long as it's as long as it's a realistic call that's gonna help us move forward, you know what I'm saying? Like because but they are value and so is mine. So I'm glad we were able to get that. But yeah, sorry, Rachel, did you did you have any points or anything? Um, really, uh, my only comment perhaps is, um, Courtney, you were more in your, um, mumbling type of a mode mm -hmm. than you have been recently. Ah, appreciate it. So, Heck yeah. on a more introspective level, sometimes it's easier to find patterns when we kind of think about what, like, preceded that, so. Right. Well, I appreciate that because and um, the energy changed. Your energy changed when you did that too. Yeah, I had to um, get that tone that you were you were on. Um, uh, one good thing about like I do jujitsu, you know, and fighting the same folks in in your school every day, mm -hmm. sparring with the same folks is it's dope because they get to know you very well, and it's like yo, you get to get better because if they know how I'm going, I'm good at the triangle on the right side. And they get to develop defenses on there. It makes me have to develop defenses more. So, um, Rachel, I really appreciate that. I'm I'm a mumbling, bumbling, stumbling guy sometimes, and I can hear my mom in the background when I'm a little boy. Open your mouth, or like, because my brain is moving so fast, you know. So that's something I really want to keep working on. So as we understand each other's nuances, let's definitely keep, uh, you know, with love and and for the sake of helping sellers out, uh, help critique us even more. So thanks, Rachel. Yeah, I'm actually about to. You're um, very welcome. I'm about to uh, go ahead and let you all rock and roll. And I think we all about to, I'm about to jump on IG and Facebook Live and do these calls here. If you're out there in YouTube world, social media world, whatever platform you're looking at this, please like, subscribe, leave us a comment about how silly we are, how much, you know, I'm pretty sure there's techniques we didn't pick up on, we didn't do well, that you could offer some advice to, some stuff we may have done well, that you could uh, offer some, you know, kind of encouragement to as well. If you're looking for scripts, if you're looking to work with folks, we JV partner with folks all over that there's deals getting done because uh, this is the world we live in. Technology allows you to do this from anywhere. So we definitely encourage you to take charge of your life and, and do your thing and lift up the people around you as you go because what we say, G, rising tides. Rising tides. Lifts all, all sales. sales. Hey, I appreciate y'all. Rachel, Greg, man, love y'all. And I'm about to jump on, uh, on the ATP thing and uh, keep it going. All right, folks. All right. Bye. Yeah. Peace. Bye-bye. Yep. Yeah.